Oh, good job. President, please be seated. The court is now in session for the proceedings in case 002-02. As informed by the chamber today, that is the 30 November 2015, the chamber will hear the testimony of a witness that is through TCW 918 in relation to Trapentement Dam Versailles. Ms. Dear Siu Huang, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Mr. Nuji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the greffier. A witness who is to testify today, that is to TCW918, confirms that to the best of his knowledge, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is Nuji and Kyusum Porn, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The witness took an oath before the Iron Club Statue this morning. He has Mr. Mombratier as his duty counsel. Both are ready to be called by the chamber. Thank you. President, thank you. The chamber now decides on a request by Nunji. The chamber has received a waiver from Nunji. Dated 30 November 2015, which states that due to his health, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his rights to participate in and be present at the 30 November 2015 hearing. He affirms that his counsel has advised him about the consequences of this waiver that it cannot in any account be construed as a waiver of his right to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented to or admitted by this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report of Noon Chi by the CUC doctor for the accused, the ECCC dated 30 November 2015, it notes that Today, Nunji has severe back pain when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nunji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audio-visual The AV unit is incited to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nunchi can follow it. This applies to the whole day. For the Proceedings, certain matters are of concern to the co-investigating, international co-investigating judge, and we have received some documents from that office, namely E319-35, and E319-35-2, Concerning the document E319-17, there has been some changes to the 
proceedings and before we proceed with hearing testimonies of witnesses, the Chamber would like to hear additional comments and observations from concerned parties. We receive a request from the co-prosecutors and from Kyrgyzstan's Kyrgyz Kyrgyz defense team Kyrgyz on this matter. However, some other issues have emerged from the co-prosecuting judge office and in order to have grounds for the management of the proceedings from now on, and in order to avoid any unintentional uh, mistakes in the proceedings concerning the uh, confidentiality of the investigation, we would like to hear comments and observations from other parties before we issue our ruling. And that will be done before we proceed to hear the testimony of uh, the uh, witness today, that is through TCW918. And the Chamber would like now to hand the floor to the co-prosecutors first. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I do not have those uh, particular rulings or memos from the Office of Co-Investigating Judges in front of me now, and I didn't come prepared to address them specifically. However, some general remarks. First of all, it's our position that the prior um, our position remains the same as in our last pleading. We believe that the procedures that were in place were sufficient and will be sufficient to assure the confidentiality of the investigations. Of course, nothing, nothing we can do is going to be 100 percent without any possibility of errors, but believe, we believe it was working and it will continue to work, and we haven't seen yet any damages done by any breach of those prior procedures. I'd also point out that in our pleading we make the point, which I want to reiterate, that it's the obligation of the trial chamber any time the trial chamber decides that there's a necessity to compromise the right to a public trial, to do that on a witness-by-witness -witness basis with a justification, particular justification for each witness for the measures imposed. And that's not something, obviously, that can be delegated to another judge who is not of this chamber. The decision has to be of your honor. It is a problem if rules about what will be public in this trial are being set by a judge that the parties do not appear in front of. Um, so we would ask the court to consider it point by point. I understand the very legitimate concerns of the co-investigating judges. We want to assure the confidentiality of investigations, but we want to do that in a way that compromises to the least extent possible the public's right to have access to this trial. President, thank you. The for your observation. The Chamber now would like to hand the floor to the legal lawyers for civil parties to make your observations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Pas d'objection particulière sur le document E319-35 et sur les, les différentes catégories de témoins ou parties civiles qui sont proposées par le, le co-juge d'instruction internationale. Nous nous en remettons à la, à la sagesse du tribunal sur ce point. Merci. Thank you. Merci. And the Chamber now would like to give the floor to the Defence Team for Nunchi if you wish to make observations regarding this matter. Um, good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Um, we were also not prepared to make submissions uh, right now. Um, at this point in time, we don't have any comments uh, in respect of this um, 
memo from the co-investigating judge. Um, the only thing I would like to say is that in reaction to prosecution, uh, the right to a public trial is a right of an accused uh, and not of the public. Um, having said that, at this point in time, no comments. President, thank you. And lastly, on this matter, the Chairman would like to hand the floor to the Defence team for give some point if you wish to make your observation regarding the, in addition to the submission you have already filed to the Chamber. Yes, good morning. Effectivement, nous maintenons la position que nous avons développée dans le cadre de nos écritures sur le sujet et sur la nécessité d'un débat public. J'ai bien euh, lu euh, les recommandations euh, du coach d'instruction sur euh, le sujet. Euh, en revanche, je n'ai pas compris euh, s'il en restait à des considérations générales. J'ai cru comprendre qu'il devait y avoir peut-être des informations particulières en fonction des témoins qui pourraient peut-être guider votre chambre. En tout état de cause, sur les témoins qui ont fait des déclarations qui sont dans le domaine public, je ne vois pas pourquoi nous ne pourrions pas les mentionner en audience publique. Et en ce qui concerne les autres déclarations, je pense que les mesures qui ont été édictées dans le passé, si nous les respectons, devraient suffire. Voilà. President, Le President, thank you for Merci. the comments and observations pour made by uh, all the parties this morning in relation to the proceeding of hearing testimonies of witnesses and the use of the documents related to the issue of uh, confidentiality of the investigation and the uh, measures that needs to be uh, taken to the document uh, issued by the International Co-Investigating Judge. Co -juge and such a matter may be involved in the hearing of the Certaines witness today. And for that reason, we uh, thank you for your observation and for that the Chamber would like to discuss among ourselves before we proceed to hear the uh, witness today. And the Chamber will take a 25-minute break now in order to discuss and deliberate on this issue. And we will resume at 22.10 this morning. The court is now in recess.